Have you ever seen a seven foot human gallop down the court, pick up his dribble 30 feet away, and fly through the air from the free throw line? Well, one day we might, thanks to Giannis Atetokounmpo, aptly known as the Greek Freak. He's nearly seven feet tall, but moves with the speed and agility of most wing players. His hands are the size of catcher's mitts. His giant strides bend the rules of geometry, and those inspector gadget arms give him arguably the largest dunk radius in NBA history. These tools make him the most devastating interior force since Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq is the only player to make 600 field goals at the rim in the 23 years the data has been tracked, doing it in his MVP season back in 2000. 19 years later, Giannis is on pace to join him in that club. Shaq dominated the slowest era in league history with unrivaled power. Today's game is faster and more spacious, and so Giannis dominates with unrivaled length and agility. He loves to build up speed in the backcourt and attack backpedaling defenders, turning his signature Euro step into one of the game's deadliest weapons. He gets the most out of his gather steps, and note how hard he changes directions, regularly covering 20 feet without a dribble. Even in the half court, his first step bursts throw off defenders, and these are violent cuts worthy of an NFL halfback. His handle is strong enough to knife into defenders like this. Look at how low he is to the floor here, and he's too big for most help when he gets to the rim. When he has a runway like this, he stresses defense to the point of breaking them, since no individual can match his size and dexterity. Not only does he shoot 74% at the rim, but Giannis is also third in the league in free throw attempts per possession. Without that head of steam, he'll still look to attack, here backing a helpless opponent into a spin cycle. He's especially comfortable driving left. Look at how low he gets. And of course, he finishes smoothly at the hoop. He's a rubber band on plays like this, stretching 10 feet in a single stride before flipping one in with that Elastigirl reach. He doesn't post up very often, only 12% of the time according to Synergy, but he has moves there too. A little flip shot, basic over the shoulder turnarounds, and of course, that spin move as a counter. Giannis's hyper aggression comes with a trade off though. His turnovers are quite high for his play style. He often loses his handle on drives, and he's stripped constantly by smaller players in the lane. But this really shows up on offensive fouls, where he's first in the league in charges committed. He doesn't always successfully sidestep defenders on his high-speed blitzes, and ends up barreling into turnovers this way. This might actually be a necessary trade-off for the success of his full-court attacks, but he could at least tighten his dribble on these kinds of plays. Atetokounmpo doesn't always run through walls in these spots, sometimes kicking it out for an open three. On this play, you can see the effectiveness of Milwaukee surrounding him with shooters. Committing multiple defenders to help almost guarantees an open look, and Giannis usually finds someone on these drive and kicks. Here, Giannis feels the help and flips it to an open shooter, and these kinds of kickouts are often his best passes. As a result, he creates more opportunities for teammates than all big men in the league outside of Nikola Jokic and Blake Griffin. Note this slick behind the back dribble, which he uses to change directions a lot, and then the comfort to make a no-look kick out. He's more hit or miss on passes to cutters. He'll hit some, but he'll misfire on others too. His overall vision is spotty. This beautiful interior laydown is one of his best passes of the year, but he'll frequently miss similar windows. He could have a laydown here as well. Note how long it takes him to recognize this open pass, even after lifting his head up. That's an eternity in the passing world. He's not really comfortable making classic pick and roll reads. This should be an easy delivery over the top, but he misses it regularly. And sometimes the execution is just a bit shoddy. There's a three available here, but he holds it for a beat and then sends a fan a souvenir. Teams also sag off him because he can't shoot well. He's a connoisseur of the air ball, even on long two-pointers, although it is a bit windy in Cleveland. But his shooting is slowly improving, and he's up to 31% from downtown since February 1st, nearly enough to keep defenses honest. 
He does bring off-ball value unrelated to shooting. He's a handful as a roll man. And of course, those arboreal limbs make him a dangerous lob threat. I am Groot. His offensive rebounding is additive too, turning teammates' misses into high percentage putbacks. And teams who don't box him out do so at their own peril. He's even better on the defensive glass, where he'll sky over players who have better position, and he's posting some of the best defensive rebounding numbers in league history this year. But it's his rim protection that stands out on D. Those physical gifts allow him to stay grounded and disciplined, even when making plays. And he can also make smaller players look like overmatched children. Giannis's quick elevation and long reach makes for jaw-dropping plays. He out apexes players at the rim, and it also allows him to erase potential mistakes that he may have made. His wingspan shrinks passing lanes too, and this play is simply a fantastic defensive reaction that combines his quickness and length and hand size to save a dunk. His defensive positioning is often good, but he struggles on this kind of pick and roll rotation, even when he's staring right at it. He occasionally lapses like this. He's probably ball watching instead of sliding into the gap. And on this play, he seems to glance back at Capella, but doesn't realize he should get back and cover the paint. On this play, I'm not sure why he's hugged so far into the corner with the ball on the opposite flank. And Giannis's athleticism can't always save him. He doesn't have the highest revving motor, and sometimes he's a bit lethargic or arrogant in help spots. When he's matched up against quicker slashers, he uses that size and agility to his benefit. His standing reach is so high that it often throws off perimeter-oriented players on their drives. His feet can be a bit heavy at times. Here, Danny Green leaves him flat-footed. And this shows up in closeouts, too. Some of his perimeter defense is hindered by screen navigation, where he's so large he often gets stuck trying to get around picks. Of course, the ability to recover sometimes offsets these smaller holes in his game. And overall, he's fairly switchable, able to cover ground quick enough to hang with guards on many plays. His slighter build does make him vulnerable to power in the post, although there are so few power-centric post weapons in the league these days that this is only a minor footnote. Impact metrics love Giannis on defense, so much so that they view him as the game's best overall player, vaulting him ahead of superior offensive weapons like James Harden. And that's what two-way impact can do. Giannis can turn defense into offense, and in doing so, offset his lack of shooting with massively efficient scoring at the rim in addition to his playmaking. He's second in the league in scoring rate this year and first in efficiency among volume scorers. Pairing that with shot creation and all league defense gives him a solid argument as the league's best player, even at just 24. I find some of his impact numbers a bit overstated given how perfect the fit is in Milwaukee right now, with Giannis surrounded by ideal pieces and no second superstar to have to mesh with. But still, he's just authored a season that most players in league history could only dream of. And so, in 2019, I have Giannis Antetokounmpo playing at a strong MVP level. If you missed it, my recent video comparing stats across eras highlighted just how impressive Giannis' season has been. I'm still undecided on whether he's number one, but hopefully this video shed some light on his immense impact. I also had a great chat with Adam Maras on the Locked On Nuggets podcast this week about Nikola Jokic as an all-time passer. I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you like these videos and want to support me in making them, you can contribute at patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. Patrons receive access to all my proprietary metrics going back to 1955, in addition to regular posts with insights that don't make the podcast or video. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate the support I've received lately, and I hope everyone out there is having a great day.